thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone for this opportunity uh, to talk about radiation therapy from a patient perspective. And my name's Julie McCrossan. Today, I want to ask you to do something to help prepare cancer patients and their families for the experience of being treated by radiation therapy. I want you to help make sure that before a patient is treated for the first time in a bunker with a radiation therapy machine or LINAC, I want you to help me make sure that they see a model of a LINAC. Here is a model of a LINAC at St James Hospital in Leeds in the United Kingdom. It's a model that all children and young adults up to the age of 25 have the chance to see before their first radiation therapy treatment. And the purpose is obviously to educate and reduce anxiety. And here's a little LINAC kit that children with cancer at Leeds can use to build a little model LINAC before their treatment. Now, in Adelaide, in South Australia, there's a schoolboy called Connor who has designed and built a range of model LINACs. His grandmother was treated with radiation therapy and had to wear a mask, as I had to do when I was treated. And Connor has created these models to help educate and prepare people for the radiation therapy experience. And here's a scale model of the Varian proton therapy machine at the Proton Beam Therapy Centre at the Christie in the United Kingdom. Each child at the Christie who's going to get proton therapy receives a proton panda, and this little panda accompanies them through their treatment and they get to see the panda on a little model proton therapy machine. People love medical models. Lego recently released uh, and announced they were going to give away free Lego MRI scanner kits to reduce anxiety for children, and they're giving them away free to hospitals. And I posted a story on LinkedIn with a, a picture of one of these MRI models, and over 40,000 people have viewed it already. Medical models are commonly used in many areas of medicine, so patients can, be, uh, 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 can help to be, uh, understand the treatment they're about to get. My mother and I were shown a model of a heart by her cardiologist so we could understand what was going wrong with her heart. My friend was shown a model of a knee by her orthopedic surgeon before she had knee surgery. My dentist showed me a model of a mouth before I got a crown. And my ear, nose and throat surgeon who diagnosed my cancer, he has a model of a head in his clinical rooms so he can explain what he's going to do to people's heads. But for some reason, radiation oncologists do not use models to show cancer patients what radiation therapy involves. And you can help me change this by promoting the use of models in patient education for adults, teenagers and children, and by supplying accurate models of your Linux to cancer centres to display in waiting rooms and to put onto the desks of radiation oncologists and other clinicians. Let me tell you my story. Nine years ago, in 2013, I was diagnosed with stage four throat cancer in my tonsils, tongue, and the back of my throat. It's called oropharyngeal cancer. I was 59 years old when I was told I had cancer. I'm 67 now. At that time I was diagnosed, I was a total non-drinker and non-smoker. I hadn't smoked or drunk alcohol for over 40 years. My cancer was caused by HPV, the human papilloma virus. And at that time, I had no idea that HPV could cause cancer in the mouth and the throat, as well as the cervix, the vulva and the vagina for women and the anus and the penis. My cancer team decided the best treatment for my cancer was 33 sessions of radiation therapy and weekly chemotherapy. And this is what the cancer looked like deep down in my throat, around my tonsils and the back of my tongue. All those lumpy bits you can see are the cancer. It was so deep down in my throat, you couldn't see it by looking in my mouth. The ear, nose and throat surgeon puts anesthesia in your nostril and he puts down a long tube with a camera on it and then the picture shows up on the screen and that's what I saw, that lumpy cancer. Now, this photo is what my throat looked like after 33 sessions of radiation therapy. The tumours are gone. 
So this is the picture before radiation therapy and this is the picture after. And as you can see, radiation therapy is very effective. So my first message is really that I am so lucky that I had quick access in Sydney, Australia, to a multidisciplinary team with a lot of people in it to treat my cancer. And I was lucky that my cancer centre had an up-to-date radiation therapy machine or LINAC that could precisely target the tumours and remove the cancer. And I was lucky I had a cancer team with a team of doctors and allied health and nurses because when you have a head and neck cancer in particular, you need a great deal of help. So clearly, radiation therapy saved my life and I'd happily have it again if I needed it. But I have to set, tell you that the short and long-term side effects of radiation therapy, particularly for a head and neck cancer patient, are very tough. I'll quickly tell you about the physical side effects and then I want to tell you about an emotional or psychological challenge that I faced that I think you can help me with. So physical side effects. Radiation therapy to the mouth and throat area causes very painful damage inside. It also makes swallowing and speaking either difficult or impossible. I lost the capacity to speak for three months. I lost the capacity to swallow normally for about six months. I relied on liquid food and I lost 20 kilograms in weight uh, very, very quickly. Now, some head and neck cancer patients have to be fed with liquid food down a, a tube into their nose. Others uh, a tube through their side into their stomach. But I was lucky enough to keep swallowing, although it took me about an hour to swallow one glass of liquid food. Another key side effect of radiation for this head and neck area is dry mouth. Uh, your teeth need saliva to survive. So dry mouth causes very significant problems for head and neck cancer patients, particularly around dental issues. The good news is that my radiation oncologist was excellent at pain management. I used major opioids and other pain relief and they worked. I had a very good nurse coordinator who helped me with everything. I had a very good dietitian who gave me the liquid food. I had a tremendous speech pathologist who taught me how to speak and swallow again. And I had very precise delivery of my radiation uh, by the radiation therapists or therapeutic radiographers as they're called in the United Kingdom. And I was very lucky that I can afford dental care. Many head and neck cancer patients can't afford dental care, and that's a huge issue, but I could. So most importantly, nine years later, after my treatment is finished, nine years later, I'm alive, I can speak, I can swallow, and I can work. Let me tell you now about the emotional or psychological challenge that I want your help with. I had never seen an immobilisation mask or a bunker. The first time I saw a mask was when I had my personal mask made and I didn't understand. The first time I saw a LINAC was on my first day of treatment when I walked into my first bunker. When that mask was clicked down tightly for the first time, I panicked. I had to wear the mask for 20 minutes of treatment alone in the bunker for 33 consecutive days, and it was the hardest experience of my life. After four sessions, I went to my nurse and I said, I cannot go in there again. It is too traumatic to be restrained by the head. She immediately helped me. For the next 29 sessions, I had a, a low dose of Valium just before I went in to have my treatment. I played the same four songs during my treatment that helped me manage the time and calm me down. I also uh, had a nurse come in and hold my hand while they clicked me into the mask a few times, and that was great. And I saw a cancer psychologist who gave me things to think about while I was in the mask. And with all this help, I finished the 33 sessions and radiation therapy saved my life. So what would help a cancer patient to be ready for the emotional challenge of radiation therapy? And how can you help? Come with me now to St. James University Hospital in the United Kingdom. Hi, I'm Lucy, I'm the paediatric radiographer here, and this is our lovely baby, Linac. So what we can do is reproduce the patient's setup in uh, Barbie mode. So we just need to push on the enable button, and then we can move around the bed into position. 
and move the gantry around. Move the floor around a bit and then give Barbie some treatment. Wow. And how do young patients and adult patients react to this? How does it help? They love it. It's a really good tool to give them a hands-on experience of what it's like to be a radiographer, but also give them an insight of what it's like to have radiotherapy treatment without actually having to go into the clinical room. So without having to kind of invade on um, time on set on the treatment machines. Um, and also it's it's less daunting than going into the big machine, into this big environment, it's quite clinical. It's kind of a fun thing to start off with as an introduction to radiotherapy. Well, one of the interests of mine is how do you reduce anxiety and distress in both adult and child patients? Um, it's just, so we've got video on here as well, which is what's playing now, oh. let me just stop that. Um, so it just, it just as an introduction, it gets them familiar with the equipment, it gets them familiar with the materials of the mask, so the mask, on Barbie is the same material that we use for the adult masks or the paediatric masks here now. It's the same carbon fibre couch top, same flooring, so it's all very similar to just hopefully reduce the anxiety of what they're going to see when they go into a treatment room. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, if all cancer patients and their families could see a model Linac with a model person on it and a little model mask if they're a head and neck cancer patient, I think it would reduce the shock of the first treatment, and it would also stimulate questions by the patient and family to get some of that stuff sorted out before they have the first treatment. Now, obviously, pre-treatment education sessions with a nurse, with models, and the capacity to ask questions would be ideal. But right now, you could make a difference by making sure there is a model LINAC in every waiting room outside the bunkers and on the desk of every radiation oncologist and other radiation clinicians. If you can't read or you can't speak the language or you're just in so much shock that you can't absorb information, if you see a little model LINAC, you understand what's about to happen. To see is to understand. Thank you.